Hi guys, this is the second video about this beautiful Kenwood RS770 speakers. You know in a previous video we repaired these uh, wired port meters and looks to me everything is fine and okay. I didn't install them back to the mixing desk. I just dropped them here to my multimedia section in the studio. So this area here is not fully treated uh, like the mixing uh, section. And uh, if you will hear some kind of moody moody uh, frequencies or some reflections, don't worry, this is not an issue of the speaker. But I will try to do my best. This my setup is developed by some French radio station. They invented it. And the name of this my setup is ORTF. If you want to learn about this mic technique a bit more, you just have to type into the Google ORTF mic technique and then you will get all the details. This mic technique is actually the simulation of the human hearing in a sterile field. And this is why the angle between the microphones is much more wider than on a XY setup. It's actually 110 degree instead of the 90 degree. And you have to keep the distance between the two mic capsule on exactly 170 millimeter. The normal ORTF mic technique is made for recording monolithic sound source in a three dimensional space. But here we have not one, but two sound source. But why this is not an issue? Because the two speaker, they are working together and in every music material, which is normal, uh, there is a center content. So the two speaker will create a virtual monolithic sound source in a three-dimensional space. And everything which is happening on a side, let's say on absolute right or on absolute left, then this will be picked up by these two microphones on an exactly precise position. Maybe all this is, sounds a bit complicated and weird, but believe me, this is working. Everything which is came from the right speaker will hit the right microphone much more earlier than the left right microphone. And everything which is came from the left speaker, of course, will hit much more earlier the left microphone than the right microphone. But the normal ORTF mic technique is not fully, fully simulating the human hearing because something is missing between the two microphones. You have your two air, and between your two air, you have a mess, your head, if you are lucky. So it's not enough for the human brain to measure only the time differences between your two air. The human brain is also calculating the filtering of your face and, and your head. So now you can see, for example, the sound is came from here. This will hit my ear, so my right one, but will hit, of course, will hit the left one, but just that cross my head, or uh, the, the sound will turn around my head. So if you want to extend the ORTF mic technique with this additional uh, filtering, then you have to place some thick and heavy textile between the two microphones. And then your recordings will be much more closer how the human ears are working. By the way, this is why you can find on the market uh, really special stereo microphones with some kind of uh, head and some kind of artificial uh, ears on it. Let me show you the mic setup and let me show you how I balanced out the, the distances between the speaker and between the microphone. Here is the mic setup. What you have to use? You have to use a pair of absolutely matched small diaphragm but cardioid microphone and you have to place them in 110 degree. And the distance between the two center point of the capsules has to be exactly 170 millimeter. And here is the towel and this will simulate 
the human head. Maybe you can see from here, but if the sound is hitting this microphone from the side, then the other microphone is behind the filtering. And if the sound is hitting this microphone, let's say from 45 degree from the center line, then the other microphone will get uh, around 50% of the original sound. But everything which is came from the middle, it will hit the two microphone in the same time with the same volume. And as you go to the side, then everything is changing. It's the same like a human head. So this is the mic setup. Let me show you the uh, speaker setup. First, what you have to check is the distance between the speaker and the wall. Here, it must be the same distance like here, and this has to be true on the other speaker also. Never ever measure the distance from here, because this is not a center line of the sound waves. The sound waves uh, came from here. And here is a really simple trick. You just have to place a CD cover on the top of the speaker, exactly on the middle, and then you can place your measurement tool to here, okay? And then you have to hit with the laser the other one. So over there we have the same setup. And if we are lucky, it has to be 2 meter and 10 millimeter. Exactly, okay. So now we have 2 meter 11 millimeter. Okay, from this microphone, which is the right side, this distance has to be the same uh, until the membrane, like the distance between the two speakers. So, over there, hop, one millimeter. Uh, okay, I can accept this, yeah? <laughs> and let's uh, measure the other one. Back. I don't see. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Absolutely the same. And here is the field recorder. And maybe you can see already, but now I'm on a uh, left side of the mic setup. And maybe you can see, but everything which is came from the left side is much more higher than on the right side. Let me go now to the right side, just like this. Okay, so now I am on the right side of the mics. You can see the, the difference is around uh, 6 dB or 5 dB, something like this. What kind of mics I'm using? This is a AKG C1000S Mark IV microphone. A really great uh, and really cheap uh, small diaphragm uh, condenser microphones. Maybe I will do some kind of review on them because I, I, I really like them. The, um, they're absolutely perfect for money applications because the C1000S models, they have a kind of trick with the capsules. Let me jump to the gears. Eh? I have here um, absolutely normal uh, CD player from the Pioneer, but it can hold four CD. So three CD here and one here on a recorder side. Okay, the amplifier is a Grundig R1000 class A amplifier and it has a trick, maybe you can see, but under the volume control, we have this small button. If you press this one, then the whole amplifier is became to the, a freaking linear amplifier. And why I'm not using some kind of modern digital amplifier here in this setup? Because these speakers are made in 1977. This amplifier is also made in 1979, if I remember good. So uh, there is no huge difference between the two on a technology side. So I cannot burn my speakers with some kind of really heavy digital amplifier or I cannot kill my digital amplifier with some kind of kickback from this speaker because this is a really big speaker and don't forget we have this uh, passive radiator over there. So the class A amplifiers, they can handle really well 
the kickbacks which is coming back from the speaker. This is called dumping factor. And this amplifier actually has, let's say, uh, a common level of damping factor. So I think this guy and these two bad boy can work really nicely together. And maybe you can see, but I just can't drive these speakers on a half power of this amplifier. And the reason for that, these bad boys, after 40 watt or something like this, they just want to destroy my studio. They are so loud, unbelievable load the speakers. So I just can't drive them on 50% uh, of the full power. Let's jump to the tracks. We have here a really nice collection uh, from Les Cartes Postales Sonores. These tracks you can download from the internet. Of course, I will share with you guys the link. Uh, it's free to download, free to use, but of course I will give uh, the credits in uh, the description of this video. So this collection here is some kind of stereo records about noises, insects, birds, rain, storm, uh, jungle, forest, whatever. The next album is the Focal Test CD. This test CD I'm using for more than 10 years or something like this. And this is a free to download from the Focal website. Everybody can use it. Everybody can judge his own uh, hi-fi system with this. Uh, actually, this is a really excellent uh, collection of uh, test songs. The next one is Jason Show. This album is contain few track, which is really tricky. Uh, you will see why. The next album what we will use is David Sestoy acoustic guitar album. And on this uh, collection, I find uh, two or three tracks, which is uh, really nicely recorded on a most simplest way. So I think he just used some kind of stereo mic technique with no effect, nothing. So this is a pure acoustic guitar. By the way, big thumbs up for this album. He is a Hungarian guy and he's a really nice guy. Of course, I will give you uh, the link in a, in a description to this specific album. David will go to the fourth one. And uh, he is a king. <laughs> By the way, I will not apply any kind of filtering or effect or EQ or compression or whatever on this record. So please prepare your best headphone and your pen and your washing machine. Eh? <laughs> so the first track what we will listen is the track nine from this Sonores album. Tiny flies, tiny bees, mosquitoes, I don't know what is flying on the front of the stereo microphone. If you have a really nice uh, headphone, I'm telling you, you can pick up every piece of fly or bee or even the spider on a corner. <laughs> now you can get a picture how these monsters, these big monsters can reproduce absolutely fine and detailed and really small sounds. <laughs> wow. <laughs> In this record, you can hear how these two monsters can define the position of the sound if the sound is on much more higher. And don't forget, you will listen to all of this across the YouTube sound compression and after the upload and after the post-production. So now you can imagine this in a real life is some kind of unbelievable listening experiments. So let me play, okay? Just listen to the raindrops on the roof, okay? So close your eyes and just listen 
to the drops. Unbelievable, eh? <laughs> okay, the next track is about birds. I don't think so, I have to say anything else, you just have to listen. <laughs> Where is the bird? Okay, next CD is this focal test CD and we will jump to the track four. And the track four is the single cylinder motorbike engine. And let me show you what the membranes are doing. I think they are simulating <laughs> the piston. <laughs> okay, let's play. The next track is from Jason's show, and this is the track 8. The drum section on a beginning is jumping from minus 40 up to 0, and then as the music is came into the picture, the dynamic range of the acoustic drums will not change at all. So how he can translate are really busy sounds on a top of 40 dB dynamic range recorded acoustic drum. Just listen, play. Okay, the next track is even more difficult because on the next track they will again start with the acoustic drum session but after they build up a total busy fast country music. 
So the speakers are not collapsing under this really busy uh, frequency spectrum. Let's play. I don't like a country music, but with these speakers I can listen to them for years. The next track is from Sestai David, and this is the track 4. And it contains two guitar. Listen really carefully what's going on with the string, with the picking noise, and where is the shape of the guitar. Huh? <laughs> And now we will find a bit with the YouTube copyright protection. So, sorry guys, you will not hear the original track from this record, which is Dr. Dre, Let Me Ride. And what is so special about this song on this single album? On a side A, the first track, is containing some kind of really subharmonic, sub, 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 10 hertz or 5 hertz or something like this. And I'm telling you guys, in the past, when I worked as a DJ, this track is killed a lot of subwoofer in the clubs, where the sound engineer guy, he forgot to apply a high pass filter on a really low frequencies. So what I will do now, I will start to play this record, this specific track, and I will show you guys the membranes. But until that, you will hear something else on YouTube. I hope YouTube will like these sounds, huh? Maybe you recognize, but uh, the pot meters of the high frequency tweeters they are not on a zero position. And there is a reason for why. Don't forget, this is almost uh, 43 year old speakers. And I have to compensate a bit on the high frequencies because I think you now the membrane is get uh, really old. But uh, maybe you can see, but I didn't add more than 10%. May you ask now, okay, what's the big deal about these uh, speakers, huh? That already sounds fantastic. And now you can imagine how they will sound after the DSP and after the b amped modification. But maybe in the next video we will take a look on this three-way 
Telefunk and TLX professional speakers, because they have a really nice feature, which is pictured here. Huh? This is the linearity. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time. Bye. Oh.